It's episode 146 of the Hop Nation USA podcast, and we're in a group that's smaller than 10. <laughs> it is <laughs> I, your host, Steve, your co-host, Adam. Say hello. Oh, okay. That was my your co-host, okay. Adam. Hello. Jesus fucking Christ. What do you think we've we're never starting done this the, We're starting <laughs> the fourth wow. year. Jesus, fourth year. Jesus Christ is not here. Obviously. <laughs> I true. think. Jesus we've wet. We've left room for him, though. And yes. our guest host, Casey, is here. What up, Shrek? <laughs> hey. Which is also hey. known as Katie and Kelsey. Y'all. Yep. The duo. This is actually going to be Katie's last episode for a while. Bye-bye. I can't. Uh, I yeah. think we told them that two episodes ago. We, we lied. We said I'm maybe. Sorry. That I can confirm. We can confirm now. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. why you Definitely got, can confirm now. Yeah. I'm but out you, this You piece. had a nice run of three episodes all together. That's never as a, happened. To wave you goodbye yeah. as you... Head off to another awful part of the world. That may or may not be <laughs> inflicted with the same zombie-inducing outbreak that I am now spreading on social media is caused by vaping. Please share that. Hell yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'll stop ripping fat cotton then. <laughs> Busting clowns. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, yes, welcome right. to the fourth year of the Hop Nation USA podcast. And I'm going to do something a little different. If you're just following us now, you can find us on social media if you search Hop Nation USA. And that'll get you Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you're listening to episodes and you want to hear brand new episodes of the Pop Nation USA podcast every Friday, because that's when we release them, mm. then just search Hop Nation USA on your favorite podcatcher. And if you're on any of those platforms, they'll leave us a five-star review because... We are a six-star show, but they only let us use five. That's right. And I'm just seeing if we can up engagement maybe by putting that at the front of the episode instead of at the back. Can I just make a note? Huh? So... If we're going to do this at the beginning of the episode, we're giving Adam zero ammo to change up the five yeah. star, six star. I understand. Yeah. There's yeah. no ammo. You're handcuffing me here. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, we're workshopping here. Okay. okay. So, yeah. I hope I was it not, works. I was not prepared for this. <laughs> I and I'm a little thrown off now, but I understand. I'm, I'm actually here for it. All right. Well, we're, thanks we're for tuning into things. the episode. <laughs> that was obviously the end Bye-bye. of it. It's time to go. <laughs> so, may, so maybe we'll come back to it at the end and let Adam have a chance at it okay. to do it correct. Do it correct. Yeah, well, I appreciate well, yeah, that. We can yeah. just let it happen organically where we do it at the end of the episode and the beginning of the episode. Yeah. And yeah. then you could just dub whatever he comes yeah. up with at the end. I get you. Put it in the beginning mm-hmm. and cut it off the end. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I love extra work. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to me. I'll fucking do it. What the hell else am I going to do? <laughs> well, the thing is, if, if you're able to put whatever I put at the end at the beginning, that's kind of a tease, kind of a hook. Mm-hmm. Like what the hell is he talking about? What mm. is he referencing? And then Fair you point. gotta keep listening. Oh, I, mm-hmm. I mean, if we are trying to up engagement and you know workshopping, putting it at the beginning, what better hook to have? Right, we are a six tuna show, but they only let us use five. No one knows what that means until they listen to the episode in full. And then they'll get the joke later. Right, or we can All make right. Adam just write content before the show starts. <laughs> oh. He already yes. knows what the topics are. Yes. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Although he does have time now. <laughs> Yes, yes. Everybody has time to contribute to the show now. Yes, we do. <laughs> Hashtag work from home life. <laughs> yes. So we'll be drinking. Yeah. Well, we're this. starting the fourth year. Yes, we yes. are. And I thought it maybe maybe it's appropriate to go all the way back to episode one. Mm-hmm. And we did breakfast beers slash coffee beers. Fuck yeah. So yes. this episode is going to be all coffee beers. Yes. Yes. I brought actual coffee. <gasps> This is exciting. The happy snakes are out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> why is that video funny? It is so funny, and I don't know why. This should be the stupidest thing you've ever seen, but it's funny. Yeah, it's the same thing as it's Eric Andre, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's all absurdism. That's why it's I funny. I really do enjoy Eric Andre. Yeah, how do you not? The first coffee beer of the evening is coming to us from the brew kettle. And the brew kettle is out of Strongsville, Ohio, and they're bringing us perfect strangers. It's a six percent ABV, thirty-five IBU coffee pale ale. Hmm. hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's something a little different because I originally I picked this up and I wasn't thinking in my brain too hard. Uh, okay. But yeah. I was thinking this was going to be somewhat along the lines of Spoonwood Cold Drip City. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but then now thinking pale ale, it's actually going to be a bit hoppier, mm-hmm. possibly. 
So, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll see. Uh, it is, though, brewed. It's somewhat of a collaboration because it's brewed with hoof-hearted coffee. Which I had no idea was a thing. Oh, really? Yes. I only knew of hoof-hearted brewing. Oh. Right. Well, they they have some of their own beers made with hoof-hearted coffee, and then they also actually sell hoof-hearted coffee. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Much the same way Hitchhiker sells their own coffee. Yeah. And, there you go. Okay. So, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. A lot of breweries nowadays have gotten into making their own coffees, and uh, yeah, hoof-hearted is like brewery and kitchen now. Oh, okay. Well, so good for them. They have separate websites. You can go on the hoof-hearted kitchen website and get their beer. Gotcha. Or get their coffee. Mm. God, I'm dumb. Also, their <laughs> Fourth actual year, Steve. Kitchen, Come on. <laughs> like their actual food menu is Fucking phenomenal. Right on. So good. Hmm. Haven't been. Nope. Let's go. What the fuck else are we doing? <laughs> Probably have to get takeout. <laughs> Whatever. I've driven to Cleveland for Kids. Mexican food. I can drive to Columbus <laughs> for who farted. You've driven to Cleveland for Mexican food? Yeah, that's a true story. Twice. Yes. I applaud you. <laughs> the mocho's really good. <laughs> they have red bell pepper margaritas. What? Yeah, it's Momocho is huh. life. I can love that place. That sounds so good. I could probably be into that. <laughs> I, we can road trip to Momocho. I am for it. We've got this loaded up. We've got the the brew kettle, perfect strangers, ready to go. It, yeah, it looks yeah. nice. Looks like pale ale. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's looks um, perfectly fine. Half a half a Scotia haze to it. A dash. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing nothing obnoxious. Certainly not in the realm of cloudy. Yeah. Can no. see all the way through. Nice mm-hmm. golden color. Yeah. Head dissipated fairly quickly, but when it was there, it was a nice white. Yes. Somewhat, not even not necessarily fluffy, but just nice looking head. Yes. Yeah. We can talk a little bit about that in segment two as well. Sure. Um, but on the nose, I'm not getting a whole lot either way of no. hops or coffee. Yeah. It's kind of a split, and both halves aren't very big at all. No. Nope. A little bit I of both. Want more coffee potentially, but <sighs> I like that. Nope. Mm-mm. <laughs> nope. Not for me. That's enjoyable. That is pleasant. It is not. <laughs> oh, uh, I got the bitterness. You got the bitterness? Yep. You got the bitterness. Yeah. Yeah, I got it too. I'm not mad about it. Though. I am. I'm not making the faces Adam's making. <laughs> I don't like it. Listeners that's that's double the bitterness. It's a squishy it face. It's bitter beer face. It's bitter beer face. Uh, and I enjoy the taste of coffee. Oh, there it is again. But this, Yeah, this the is. hops are definitely stronger to taste than on the nose. I feel like the coffee is equal both through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you get a little bit of roastiness up front from the coffee, and then they just kind of merge, merge lane into bitterness. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm here for it. I am not. It's a unique combination, but I enjoy it. Y'all can have this. Planning on it. Thanks, oh, Adam. No problem. Thanks for sharing. You're so generous. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> Trust me. Excellent. Nice. Yeah. So, so yeah. you, you want to just let it warm up? I'm come back gonna to it. have yeah. to. <laughs> all right. See how this goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, let I, it I, breathe a little bit. <laughs> release the tannins what is it what's the wine thing i don't fucking something like that wine. it says it's only something about tannins yeah it's supposed to only have 35 ibus and it probably does they got yeah. you're just hypersensitive all the use out of every single one of them yeah. they squeezed them really hard they did then they put the coffee in there yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and somehow coffee doesn't count into the ibu no well typically i the like bit- a good coffee beer right the bitterness has hang time yeah yeah no doubt about it. <laughs> no doubt about Aww, it. Poor baby. I know. So just, sad. So sad. Such a sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to the triple N. Yes. News, notes, and neat. Kind of neat. Not so much neat. News, <laughs> we're not going to do a whole lot of either. No. Because uh, news is ever changing and we're a once a week show. Right. Yes. And right now it's one thing and one thing only. Yeah. Um, we are... We do want to give shout outs though to uh, like Cans Pittsburgh. Yes. Breweries in PA. Breweries in PA and uh, Hop Culture. They're all doing their best. They kind of keep up to the minute mm-hmm. of how breweries are handling and where you can get to go from, mm-hmm. who's giving growlers away, who's doing delivery. It, yeah. it seemed like every 10, 15 minutes, Cans PGH was putting something else out there, keeping everybody updated. I mean, it was it, it, putting in work. Yeah. yeah, to yeah. keep everybody up to date. I yeah. mean, I was I was impressed. Yeah, uh, with what was what was being put out there. So kudos, golf clap, whatever you want to say. Yeah, yeah. And you can follow him at Cans PGH on the Instagram. That's his major source. Also on the Twitter. He's on Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, breweries in PA. 
Uh, not to put them in second place, but Cannes PGH just got mentioned first. But breweries and PA, they're bringing the ruckus as well. They're keeping everybody up to date. Well, yeah, well, they're pretty much centralizing all the news. Yes. So yeah. follow that website. They're becoming can... a hub. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Hop Culture is doing the same thing, and I think that's more of a national mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so you can kind of find everybody that's there. But if you're listening in PA, follow Brews in PA. If you're listening in Pittsburgh, follow Cans PGH. That's pretty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Break it down. Why not both? Yeah, yeah both. All them. And yes. if you're in Pittsburgh, I know a lot of local neighborhoods like the North Side and Lawrenceville have kind of started putting out lists of businesses mm-hmm. that are open and available for takeout or if they're offering delivery and what their new hours are. So yeah. it's really all about like supporting the local community, supporting your neighborhood, supporting... The- the X is actually um, looking for small businesses to contribute to a list there, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that the X and DVE are both putting that on. So if you go Good. to their website, if you are a small business, go there and put your information in for what hours you're open, what you're offering, even if it's just gift cards digitally. Right. Yeah. Get your stuff out there so mm-hmm. people know so you're still bringing in some income. Yeah. We're, we're all in this together. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw KDKA do the same thing as well. So. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Gift cards are a great way to support local businesses you can get them online you can use them when everyone's open again Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i know i bought some coffee from georgia today online because i was like well i need coffee so (laughs) oh fuck i I just remembered allegheny coffee will ship yeah they do because i bought coffee coffee from them also this morning (laughs) oh that's happening (laughs) well i'm like okay well if i'm gonna be home this much now i need more coffee in my life because i'm gonna be making a giant pot in the morning now oh also um instead of my 273 if you're still buying groceries or toilet paper hunting you can get nicholas coffee at shop and save oh excellent yeah i got one of those right down the road you could also just poop in maxwell cans (laughs) Oh, I mean, you can Damn. have that as a solution for anything. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I could that's just an old time solution. I could just get a shovel and go out in my backyard. Hell yeah, <laughs> I have a shed for a reason. I mean, just poop shed. <laughs> I don't know where to go with it. You don't <laughs> go out to the shed with it. Okay. Ah, <laughs> okay. So yeah, those are some of your solutions as we work through this. Don't know what news is going to be for the rest of the time, so I'm not going to speculate on it. I have, a, I have a little story. What do you have is a little story. It's just a little, like, oh, that's nice. Okay. So Johnson City Brewing in Tennessee is, well, they're still prepping for their beer week. Their craft beer week uh, down there is April 13th to the 18th, and they usually um, have different breweries hosting the process. Um, this year is going to be Latham's Breweries hosting, but... Um, I mean, I I hope for their sake they're able to celebrate their craft beer week. But while everybody's getting together and brewing in preparation for it, they're actually also taking donations for the tornado relief. Because I think everybody seems to forget there was a pretty massive tornado in in Tennessee, um, which feels like it was a billion years ago. It's only been a couple weeks, and a lot of people were really displaced by that. So I don't know. Just try imagine trying to quarantine yourself whenever you don't have a home anymore. Yeah, That's I thought about that. Fucking suck, yeah, man. I thought about that. It, like, there's still cleanup, but you're yeah. also being asked to quarantine. Yeah, right? yeah. so that's like a like, really ugh. tough situation. So um, there's a bunch of brewers coming together to help raise money for that down there right now. Good. So yeah, that's cool. Couldn't find any link to donate. There might be one if you do a Google, but uh, Johnson City Brewing is the one who's heading that okay. up. So nice. maybe give that a, a shot. Okay. I assume that something similar is going to happen for Utah breweries. Well, for what happened out in Utah earlier, both of them. Yes. Yeah, that, that, they got a few of them. <laughs> but uh, with the earthquake that happened earlier this week, yeah, I, I, I do at one point hope to get out to the brewer's cabinet mm-hmm. that's out there. Or I, is that Reno? Ooh, that's a whole different state. Ooh, I know. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> that's Ooh, whole, yeah. it's not even close to Utah. Where, that's where? the whole wrong side of Nevada. I'd still like to go to <laughs> wherever <laughs> the it is, <laughs> wherever <laughs> that is. But also Reno's nice. You should yeah. check it out. Make okay. a drive to Tahoe while you're there. Oh, Your okay. Tahoe is yeah. beautiful. Tahoe's amazing. All right, I have to go. Yeah. Didn't Tahoe just get slammed with a ton of snow too? Yeah, that happens every year. They still got there it. are roads in Tahoe you're not allowed on until the end of April. Neat. Okay, yeah, yeah there, there you go. There's a neat. Neat. <laughs> hey, all right. I want that. <laughs> it's a, hey, it's a fact I learned. <laughs> Some roads in, you can't go on in Utah in April. In the more Tahoe. you know. <laughs> in Tahoe's still Nevada. It's over, yeah. well, and California, but cl- it's yeah. closer to Reno. It's all yeah. yeah. That's, that's where you fly into. I went to Sacramento one time. That was a hike. That feels like Why a Why don't you just take a car? 
Don't even dignify it with a response. <laughs> ignore don't, him. Just ignore him. Don't We're even look over there. We're back with Steve, Katie, Kelsey. Him. Adam <laughs> left. Adam has left the chat. <laughs> been banished to the couch. Ignore him moving on. No group <laughs> drinking parties for Adam. <laughs> yeah, Come on. Just... Oh, that's a thing, by the way. Apparently the Japanese have a... Like I, I don't know why so many people in Japan have Zoom accounts, but they do. Oh, that's not just a Japanese thing. The I, very first live Pittsburgh happy hour oh, yeah? happened. Yeah, on Wednesday. It was hosted by the Pittsburgh Craft Beer Society. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Uh, across Zoom, yeah. you go on your live happy hour. Well, so, there's the, there's another neat for you. Yeah. They, in Japan specifically, they're aiming to do it with strangers, which I think is fantastic. Oh. <laughs> they're not at inviting people they already know. They're just logging into whatever chat's already open. And so they're just meeting strangers from all over and just nice. having a drink, which oh, yeah. I think is great. Camp I, I stay up late. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, man. Do it. Camp I, motherfuckers. <laughs> I know, I'll see you later. <laughs> I know um, Pittsburgh Beer Ladies did one on uh, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, okay. That's cool. So, yeah. All right. So well, we have an article, and we oh. this is this is a we new have thing. An Boy, we, need an article. Article. we need to say article with air yeah. quotes. This is, this seems this is like a it's a new theme. Tangent and a thesaurus. <laughs> this is a new theme for the show where I find <laughs> shitty beer articles <laughs> and bring them to the show and we tear them apart. Yes. Couple I, a couple episodes ago we had the White Horse article that was oh terribly my Atlanta. written. And, and now we have a new one. It has been topped. Yeah, it has been way topped. Uh, this one comes to us from Delaware Online. And I hope you transcribe what we're about to tell you and add it as a, a counterpoint. Or a counter opinion. Like, this, it I'd, was posted as an opinion. I'd like to yes. preface this with this was written by an individual who, uh, I guess, has taught history and political science. Those are his focuses. Yeah. So, uh, stay in his lane is what he should try to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the article is Yingling Beer and Hershey Chocolate Imperfect Together, written by Samuel B. Hoff. And at the point that I'm reading this, there's already an editor's note that things had to be fixed <laughs> because there was things that yes. were wrong when I originally read it. That's my very first question. <laughs> the glaring error of the location of the brewery was wrong. I feel right. It's not like it's on the fucking bottle. <laughs> no, not at all. All right, audience. Where's Yingling from? Right. So uh, it's on the fucking television commercials. It's, it's on, on the, the billboard. It's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. everywhere. And that's what makes this opinion not so worth taking. So it starts with him going on about how Yingling and Hershey have put out a beer. We all know about it. That was in October. Yes. It was a fine porter. I really enjoyed it. I think everybody here who had it, like, at least found it tolerable. I think it tasted like Tootsie Rolls, which I think is perfectly acceptable for it coming from Yingling and Hershey. Yeah. It didn't have, like, a strong, like, my closest comparison might be, like, Pen Chocolate Meltdown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that has, like, a stronger dark chocolate that does, yeah. flavor to it. This yeah. didn't have that. It was not bad. It was definitely a little bit sweeter than I was going. Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. I'd be interested Perfectly in. Perfectly drinkable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it start, he starts the article, though, by saying Yingling in, in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> Is that what he put? I That's wondered. what he put. He called it Philadelphia. It has since been changed to the legendary Pottsville, PA, because somebody corrected him. But Yingling, the Philadelphia Beer Company. Did it say the legendary Philadelphia, no, it PA did, no, beer? No, it, said, oh. no, it did not. It, said the, it, it just said the Philadelphia Beer Company, and then it said, and Hershey... The Chocolate King in nearby Pennsylvania, which if you've ever written anything, <laughs> you don't say nearby Pennsylvania. <laughs> Pittsburgh Did near Pennsylvania. Say yeah. Nearby Hershey, Pennsylvania. I wonder. No, it didn't. no, near Maryland. I'm wondering if that's what he was thinking. It's no. what he was thinking. Well, even how he wrote this, the correction, the legendary Pottsville, Pennsylvania beer company in nearby Pennsylvania, yeah. like. It's still, yeah. The city in Pennsylvania is near Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. So he's already demonstrated he doesn't know where shit is. This is that <laughs> asshole that writes a new fucking textbook every year and makes his fucking kids buy it every For year. For sure. This is that guy. Oh. Yeah. Also, he looks like a washed up Better Call Saul. <laughs> He, he absolutely ooh, does. Yeah. He looks That's like, one of my only superpowers. I can look at somebody and see what they look like. That's all I've got. He looks like he used to play rockabilly music. Yes. Yeah. He goes on to say, uh, starting late, uh, starting last October, the concoction was available in 13 states in D.C. No wonder I saw so many folks fleeing to the other 37 states. Ha ha. What a joke. Okay. So this. He got them good. This was my. My. I don't even know how many issues in three. This is my fourth issue in. 
Yeah. Starting last October, and we're going to go on to say it's available from October to February. The fuck are you writing about it now for? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you for what like took you so four long. months ago? This isn't even like this isn't relevant. Right. And and then you're going to see that it's a Valentine's Day gift. When? Yeah. I mean, how is the dementia? <laughs> is it going well? Like, <laughs> to, to be clear, this was posted on March 17th. This isn't like I pulled something out of February. He, This went up March posted, 17th. Yeah. yeah. He says in October they put it out and then everybody fled because it was bad. No, it wasn't. That didn't happen. Actually, a lot of people really liked it. <laughs> right. People lot- were actually hunting it down. Right. Yes. Like a lot of the Facebook pages and groups that I'm in was, oh, my God, where'd you get that? Where can I get this? Because oh, it was draft only for a while. It yeah. was. Yeah. And there was like, I know industry would fill the growl. There were a few places that would do yeah. growler fills. Right. Yeah. You could get some growlers and crowlers eventually. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the other thing is he goes throughout this uh, article without ever giving his own opinion of it yeah his own opinion his own tasting notes yeah. right what you, is what is wrong with the beer it's just that it's it's wrong for some reason mm-hmm. yeah because it's a it's, monumental mistake of assuming amalgamation of two recognizable brand names will create something viable and in demand okay so stick with me here kids <laughs> we've all seen friends right Yes. Might not be your favorite show or something you leave on, but everybody's seen Friends. Yes. And there's an episode where Monica and Chandler are attempting to adopt a child, and Joey wants to write them a letter of recommendation. And Joey, in this episode, discovers the thesaurus and realizes he can find a more smart-sounding kind of word <laughs> for every word in his letter. So he does that. Yeah. This guy did it, too. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of word salad in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. However, no amount of time would have been sufficient to s- sanction this sacrilege. Like, or you just got a real hard on for alliteration. <laughs> yes, like, which alliteration in itself is bad writing, as a lot of people would tell you. Yeah, the, uh, I think the one that encapsulizes this uh, word salad uh, thesaurus use is it, it, at the very end where he says, I suggest synchronizing this beastly blend with the sink drain and leaving each component to thrive on its own. <laughs> you nailed that shit, man. You should put your glasses on the yeah. edge of your nose for that. Besides <laughs> that, but like, just and, and and there's no continuity. So, given that this is the first meshing of these items, it should be the last. Yeah. Okay. So that's blatantly wrong. So you're saying because we have how many chocolate beers have you had in your lifetime, and how many have existed way before this? Right. One? This, this is not. This is not new. Plus, no. <laughs> I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've not seen any press saying this is going to be an annual thing. Right. But he's going on and on. This should be the last time that they do it. They're marketing it seasonally. I mean, do you think it's relevant because you're just warning people, hey? Don't buy this when it's released again in seven months. Yeah, or people don't you know remember. Beer's gonna change in seven <laughs> yeah. months. We went from IPAs to sours and slushies overnight. Right. Like, but can we just talk about the one glaring thing that I just could not fucking get past? I actually started Googling stuff. I'm like, because I read this 15 times and I just I okay. thought I thought maybe I read it wrong. I don't know. Go ahead. So there's one there's another thing I've saw that is terrible, but you go ahead and this second to last paragraph here. Yes. I don't know if this is where you were. So <laughs> Uh, he's he's talking about um, combinations. History is f- filled with failed fusions. There's another. Oh. You mean the ash heap of history? Yes, <laughs> the ash heap of history is filled with failed fusions. Seriously, with the alliteration. <laughs> Seriously. All right. There was Colgate frozen meals, but no one wanted toothpaste flavored meatloaf. Mm-hmm. Let's assume people weren't so fucking stupid they thought the meatloaf would be mm. toothpaste flavored, first of all. Ben gay aspirin, but no one was going to swallow pills, which were going to burn going down. Ben gay is owned by Bayer. They're not hurting. They're, so they're, who yeah. gives a shit? And then the fucking crowning jewel of this paragraph <laughs> that I could not fucking wrap my head around. In these instances and countless others, the sum of the parts was less than the whole. Yeah. Isn't the original line would have been the whole is greater than the sum of the parts right Mm -hmm. so let's break this down stick with me so in that case the whole is greater than the parts yeah Mm -hmm. and you wrote the sum of the parts is less than the whole so the parts is less the whole is greater so you're basically saying these things are good that these are good fusions 
while you're trying to say they're bad fusions. Yeah. This makes no fucking sense. Yes, it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, you fucked up your own <laughs> literary trick after uh, spoon-feeding the Thoris bullshit and, and it's just suggests bad. synchronizing beastly blend. I, I mean, uh. So to jump back a little bit in that paragraph, the Colgate frozen meals, that was just a division of Colgate for a bit. Mm. Yeah. Like, it doesn't... Everyone's trying to do a frozen meal at some point. Right. Kurt Angle had his own line of frozen meals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I get that a lot of this is intended to be tongue in cheek and they're implying, he's implying his opinion by just shitting all over a beer that at no point does it say he's actually drank. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, what are your credentials? Well, his condren- What do you yeah. know about beer? What I mean, compare it to something. Yeah, exactly. There's there's nothing comparative about beer. There's no tasting notes. There's nothing else in there. Here's another fun thing that stands out in the last paragraph. Yingling recommends pairing the chocolate porter with meats, cheeses, and deserts. Oh, yeah. it does say deserts. <laughs> I did see that. I fucking missed that. Oh, I saw that's it and on I was me. like, by that point, I was so fed up with the article and I was just like, I can't. It's, it's not I did the couch throw. Like, I read this once and I was like, I must have read that wrong. And I picked it up and I read it again. And then my phone just like, I threw my phone. Like, I did the, the couch throw where the phone hits the cushion. I was like, this is my with brain. With deserts. No. Yeah. Do you think? In a desert, that this beer would provide you some hydration and like quench your yes. thirst. Yes, this would mm-hmm. be great in deserts. I'm about yeah. to go to the desert, and I'd rather have this than the Franks they only have. <laughs> Franks or Bud Light, but, take your pick. And guess what? You can get sick of Franks. <laughs> <laughs> and it still says desert in the updated copy after it's okay. already been changed. <laughs> Tell me he has a Twitter. I went looking for it because I, ooh, I wanted him to listen to this episode so bad, and I'll still look harder, but. I didn't find it yet. I yet. want, I want Mike Muller, if you're listening, <laughs> I want you to write a critique of this piece. Yeah. And publish it. Yeah. Th- this is, this is one worth sending around to all of the beer writers out there. Yeah. Mm. This is, this is trash. Oh man. Dr. Samuel B. Hoff, this is an episode of stay in your lane that you should definitely adhere to. You're a doctor in poli sci but somehow don't know the difference between desert and dessert and i have a question and this might be my own (laughs) ignorance but what is the delaware state society of the cincinnati (laughs) (laughs) i truly don't know i actually don't know what that is good question i didn't google it um do you want to go back a little bit because what is the george washington distinguished professor professor for the Delaware State Society of the that Cincinnati. Meant he was given some sort of credential or certificate from George Washington University. That's how Maybe. I interpreted that. I could be wrong. I don't know. Unless George Washington himself. Oh shit. Gave he, d- him he did this. cross the Delaware. I saw a picture of it. <laughs> so whatever. This guy has yeah. a bunch of word salad fake credits anyway. So <laughs> I can't I can't with this guy. I'm going on a deeper dive, Katie. Don't worry, I'll find it out. Anyways, uh, tweet at us because you guys might find it before Kelsey. <laughs> it's, it's the nation's oldest patriotic organization. The Cincinnati? The Society of the Cincinnati. Oh. Older than the Sons of Liberty? I was, was going to say, do the Masons know about this? <laughs> oh, wait, what if the Illuminati aren't the Masons? What if the Cincinnati are the Masons? Oh. They want us to think it's the Masons. Throwing us off the whole time. Its mission is to promote knowledge and appreciation of the achievement of American independence and to foster fellowship among its members. Now a nonprofit educational organization devoted to the principles and ideals of its founders, the Modern Society maintains its headquarters, library, and museum at the Anderson House in Washington. So DC. what I'm taking from this is that he is a distinguished professor for a nonprofit. So basically, no one was willing to pay this man. Is this Prager you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, per, I think in the end, perhaps he should just take his own nonprofit's mission statement uh, to heart and get some knowledge. Yes. Get some knowledge about but, beer and the fact that beer and chocolate beer have been around a lot longer than he knows what he's talking about. Put the fucking thesaurus down. That's put it down. And no more alliteration. No more alliteration. Get yourself an editor. Son. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's fine to use alliteration um, in some instances. If it's purposeful. But every other sentence is a bit much. So, so yeah, don't try to beer right 
or else I'll find it <laughs> and I'll bring it on the show. See, that was the thing when you first brought this up to me. Yeah. You didn't take much to convince me to put it on the show. No. And you were very upfront about what you were going to do with yeah. it. Yeah. I said, I said, let's shit on this old boomer. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, this guy's a clown. Let's get him. <laughs> it was just not good. But let's not dwell on that as long as we have. No. Honestly, we've probably given it more time and, and acknowledgement that we should have. Hey, hey you know what? Slow. <laughs> <laughs> but let's... Uh, I don't think there's such a thing as too much time ridiculing somebody who's trying to be boastful when they're in fact an idiot. Yeah. Fair. The, this is this guy has and I say that Dunning somebody, Kruger written all over him. <laughs> I say that as somebody who's been binge watching Sherlock Holmes television <laughs> shows. <laughs> I'm really in the mindset for that right now. Yeah. We go Let's, back to listen to Brian Setzer and stay out of the shit. <laughs> that is Brian Setzer hair. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Na- fucking nailed it. Yes. All right. Well, let's jump jive and wail back to the brew kettle. Nice perfect one. strangers. <laughs> Do you want more? No. All right. <laughs> But it, no. was, it was pretty good. I feel like the bitterness... My cousin! <laughs> <laughs> comes from the island of Mipos. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping somebody would throw that in there. No, I, I dig it. I'm down, too. Look, I, like, I don't know how many I drink, because that bitterness does have some hang time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, if, there's definitely certain meals I'm not going to consume this with. No. But for the most part, like, I was a little afraid of the concept of the combination. Yeah. But no, it works. Neither's over too overpowering, and that's really, I think, how they nailed it. Right, Kelsey. What were your thoughts? You're you're oddly silent on this. I'm still debating <laughs> on my thoughts on it because, on the one hand, the bitterness doesn't necessarily bother the bitterness doesn't necessarily bother me, but I want it to have more coffee flavor. Yes. I w- <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I want it to taste more like coffee. Like if you're gonna tell me that you or brewed your coffee pale ale, I need more coffee in there. It's one of the Steve rules. I need more coffee in there. If you put it on the label, you got to bring it. I think I felt like they brought it. I, I got enough, so I'm not, I'm not enacting my own rule on it. I, I, I got enough. Yeah, I well, wanted, you got enough for the beer. <laughs> I'm just being greedy. I think I just wanted more. Yeah. But I'm like getting well, that fine. roastiness up front a little bit. I'm seeing where it merges with the bitterness. Like I'm getting all of that. Mm-hmm. I have good news for you. There's more coffee beer coming. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so let's get to I want to just that. be smacked in the face with it. Good news. It's coming. I can't yes. wait. <laughs> Great. Uh, all right. Well, Stay uh, tuned for a thunking sound, which is us smacking Kelsey in the face <laughs> with coffee beer in segment two. You asked when for this. Back. <laughs> you asked for this. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. First Sip Brew Box is a one-of-a-kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials, including t-shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPUSA when you sign up at firstsipbrewbox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at firstsipbrewbox.com. Dot com. Welcome back to episode 146 of the Hop Nation USA podcast, and this is segment two of our coffee beers episode, which means we have another coffee beer coming up. Katie, what is that beer? Katie is little kid stupid on Christmas excited. <laughs> this is Hitchhiker Next to Normal. It is a sour with strawberry and coffee. It is a 5.8% ABV. Brewed with oats and wheat, conditioned on strawberries and Ethi- Ethiopian limu, limu, emu limu, coffee beans, L I M U. However you say that word. Okay. Ethiopian limu emu, Liberty Biberty coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> Liberty Biberty. <laughs> it's actually shameful how hard I laugh at those commercials. Liberty Biberty and uh, Hey You Woodchucks, quit chucking that wood. <laughs> I fucking lose it. I lose it every time. Um, but yeah, so that's what we got. Okay. Um, I've, I've had this before a lot. All right. <laughs> All right. This uh, week. Yeah. In the past, we featured the blueberry version. Yes. So now we, we're on strawberry version. We greatly enjoyed that one. Did yeah. you say there's a raspberry version also? There's a raspberry version that's come oh, out. I believe there's a peach version that's come out. And I believe. I'd really like to be around for that raspberry. That's out now. Oh. You I can go. Seen it. If you want to go support Hitchhiker, uh, they are. Their R- retail is closed. Pills? No, no. Their retail is closed. Uh, so everything is at Thank the Eagles. You. Okay. So go find your giant eagle. They have a list up on their website. 
and on social media. Is it on draft at Giant Eagles? Ooh, that I don't know. It might be. Depends. All the cans are going to be at Giant Eagle for a while from okay. Hitchhiker, and you can get stuff from there. I've actually seen it at a few local places, too, if you guys want to do small business. Mm-hmm. There's um, Beer and Pop for Less in Bridgeville had it. Love mm-hmm. Beer and Pop for Less in Bridgeville. <clears throat> and um, You can also get it at uh, uh, House of Brews yes, in Robinson. Yes, which moved, by the way, guys. Yeah, it's it down by Guitar World now. Down next to Guitar World right next to the state store that's not open. I have no idea if Wait, House, House of Brews is still open, though. House of Brews might still be open. They might be. Uh, yeah. They were open on Wait, they Sunday. Moved, though? The location moved it's bigger. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can walk through it now without <gasps> tripping on stuff. And oh I can my gosh. I could say that they were open on Monday as well. Right. All right, there <laughs> they you were go. open on Monday. <laughs> so they very well might still be there. At the very least, even if they're not open to the public, they're probably still there setting up because right. they moved this past week. Yeah. Okay. So But yeah, I, I think Hitchhiker couldn't guarantee that uh, these other places would be open, but Giant Eagle grocery store should yeah. generally be open the longest. Yeah. But the one thing I wanted to point out about <clears throat> this one, the strawberry versus the blueberry, you had a hard to say Ethiopian kind of coffee. Yeah. The blueberry was a different kind of hard to say. It was the Ethiopian Yurka Chefe. Oh. Well, I don't know. So it's different beans. <laughs> this isn't hard to say. It's L-I-M-U. So it's either Limu or Limu. One of the two. But I don't know which one it is. I don't know. So if you're a coffee connoisseur, let us know. Get at us. Oh, yeah. Correct us. my pronunciation. Get us up. Because I'm not a buffoon writing articles about beer pretending <laughs> I fucking know everything. I can admit there's a gap in my knowledge there. Yes, we're willing to be open about that. We don't know everything. But nope. we know the Hershey's Porter wasn't bad. <laughs> it tasted like Tootsie Roll. It's fine. That's what it should taste fine. like. I don't even like Yingling, and I have political you know, misgivings with Yingling, but I can still admit it was an okay beer. I <laughs> enjoyed it. Yeah, but let's get to what we're talking about. You guys now. ever the- drink um, orange grapefruit juice? The no. blend? No. It no. looks like that. That's exactly... Or the strawberry orange banana That juice. I have had. This is... I'll give you that, yeah. Kind of like... It's not quite as pink as that stuff mm-hmm. is, but it yeah. looks very, very much like that. It's got the haziness. So obviously, yeah. it doesn't have the pulp. But uh, that's, that's what I yeah. see. On the nose, it smells nothing like that, though. Right. <laughs> it's got a very pronounced coffee smell to it. Yeah. Really? I'm getting all strawberry. Really? I'm getting coffee, but with a little bit of sweetness at the, the co- back. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting the coffee at the back. I'm getting the coffee on the front, the sweetness out the back. I'm, I'm just Kelsey fucking on that one. broken. <laughs> Doing it backwards. It is, like, kind of golden pale, but it's completely, like, hazed through. Maybe mine's a little different. I think we uh, probably should have rolled the can first. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, this can needed a roll. Yeah. Yeah, everybody else's pour is a little pinker than mine. Yeah, it set Steve up a little bit there. There's my pink haze. There we go. (laughs) Got you. you. There's a whole bunch of beer. Hope you like it. (laughs) Let's drink it. Oh, still so fucking good. Mm. Oh, yeah. Top of the list, baby. Yep. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, honestly, we already did the next normal blueberry. I just brought this one on because... It's a coffee beer. It's a, it, Well, yeah, it's a coffee and it's beer a and it was a given. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to have a nice episode. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Yeah, we did have a couple of rough patches, I guess. Yeah. And Maybe. it's definitely going to be some trade bait uh, out of my fridge later on. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you have triple shakes in there and I'm going to can that. Right. Oh, can for Steve. <laughs> yeah. Dude, get the triple shakes. So good. I'm a, I'm about to get in on that real quick. Do it. Totes worth it. But back to this next yeah, to normal with the strawberry. Yeah, back to other hitchhiker beer. Uh, yep. Just drink hitchhiker beer is the theme. Um, yeah, no, this is fucking phenomenal. I'm not getting too, too much coffee. I'm getting a lot of the strawberry. But I actually did notice the longer I would let this sit, because I don't typically drink very fast, the coffee mm-hmm. would be a little bit stronger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I get, I get a lot of coffee up front. Strawberry is always a hard flavor to, like, pull off in beer. Yeah. That well, and peach, if you don't do it in giant, like, huge batches. The other thing is being able to pull it off without it being a fake taste. Mm-hmm. That's, that's something that's very difficult. And I think a lot of that is because those two fruits are mostly water. Yeah. So yeah. you got to pack so much more in there to right. be able to get a level of flavor that is perceptible. Right. I, I find it very nice. Both both the strawberry and the coffee are, are definitely there. Yeah. yeah. And, and it does have a bit of a sour side to it, which yeah. is what it's supposed to and be. And it's not like pucker face sour. Mm-hmm. No. Oh. But you know that it has tart tendencies. Yeah. Now there's that alliteration again. I shouldn't have read that ah. article. <laughs> Ugh, it's contagious. Got it in your brain. It's not too tart, though, because no. I'm enjoying it. So. I'm good. <laughs> But it's tart enough that I'm enjoying it. Right. I'm obsessed with it. And it's It's got enough coffee that we're all enjoying it. Yes. (laughs) I still have like three cans at home and I'm still going to hunt more. Like, (laughs) 
I gotta stop buying beer. I keep buying beer like I'm gonna fucking be here to leave. drink it. <laughs> I'm going to loot Katie's house while she's gone. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to. There's a lot of shit in there that Chris is not gonna drink. Which by loot, it just might be, hey, Chris, can I have yeah. And he goes, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might have to fight Harold for it. That's fine. Ooh. I'll watch that. Harold's in better shape than I am. He also has the advantage of knowing where my house is. Double out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'll just go to I'll just go to Mindful and Carnegie and just start walking in circles. <laughs> just get wider this, and wider. Yeah, do the spiral out circle. Just knock on every door. Is this yeah. Katie's house? No. Is there Chris. Here? <laughs> <laughs> see a dopey looking dog in the window that looks like one of the hyenas from The Lion King. You have found it. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's your landmark. There you go. Oh, Ed, I'm here. <laughs> exactly. He looks like Ed. Ed oh, Ed's man. a little smarter than Jake. Bless his heart. My dog is a moron. <laughs> Uh, right, so, so what, Steve, what are we talking about? Yeah. So, since we're doing a coffee episode and we're looking for evergreen content in the face of things are changing every year around, yes. every daily, uh, I decided that we're going to talk about the history of coffee beers. Excellent. Okay. The problem is there's not a lot of history to coffee beers, so <laughs> I also put in the history of coffee. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we're, okay. The history of coffee? Yes. Oh. Do we have that kind of time? A little condense. Yeah. Uh, a little condense. Oh, <laughs> almighty. Oh, Let's say it's the espresso version. <clears throat> yeah. I told oh, somebody yeah. the other day that's the, is it Sumatra beans? Which Sumatra. Is, is that the one with the elephant on the bag at Starbucks? And that's because they're fertilized in elephant poop. <laughs> And the person I told this to got real offended. And they're like, I'm never drinking that again. It's fertilized. And I'm like, they're all fertilized in some kind of poop. Yeah. Just pick your animal. <laughs> pick your poop. Sometimes beans, and I don't know which ones are also digested. I yes. Guess. There's some I like, learned baboon. That. I learned and, that on elementary. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like there's I some like baboons, I think. I that, and that show's so good. I want to say lemurs, but that's mostly because I just want to say lemurs. Okay. I, <laughs> I like don't know. Move it, it's not in my history. I like to move it, move it. I like to move Steve, it. Steve, you see what you started? I like I to move it. it. You said lemurs. Uh, that's that's, that was on you. You yeah. started. Had nothing to do with Steve. <laughs> just, I'm just going to blame it on him. Legend <laughs> has it. <laughs> So what you get with Casey, you have to accept it. Yeah. That's where we're at. I understand. Yeah. I also know how to cut everybody off. <laughs> we want to go back to our last Casey episode. This beer would go fantastic with waffles. Um, anyway, Steve, where were you? Legend has it that the origination of coffee starts in Ethiopia, which is appropriate that we're drinking Ethiopian coffee-made coffee beer. And it starts with a goat herder who noticed that his goats were eating berries off of certain plants and they wouldn't go to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then he took these berries to his abbot in his local religion, wherever it was. And abbot? The, an yeah, abbot. Not his hey, abbot. <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hate that guy. <laughs> uh, and then the abbot made a drink with the berries. And then he also found that the drink kept him up and energized. And that was the legend. And then they started taking them out of the sheep poop. It <laughs> could have been, could have been a lot of things. Uh, what the first substantiated knowledge of coffee, though, comes from the 15th century, and that's out of Yemen, where they first started drinking coffee that was imported from Ethiopia. Huh. Yeah. Huh. And then that, uh, that's where you get your Arabica from because you're talking about the Arabian Peninsula because that's where cultivation and trade started. I, have a, I knew somebody who would only say Arabica. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get on that level of pretension. Please tone it down. Arabica. So people, Acai. Just say Akai. No one gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been through that on yeah. the past episode. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you get started in the Arabian Peninsula in the 15th century, 16th century. That's when it starts trading into Europe, and obviously, when it goes into Europe, it's going to go into Ying, uh, go in, I almost go said into Yingling, Yingling. <laughs> which God is damn in it. Philadelphia, <laughs> Pennsylvania, <laughs> which is near Pennsylvania. <laughs> it goes into England, <laughs> not Yingland. <laughs> Sidebar: Did we figure out the England Great Britain thing? Did anybody add us? No, nobody got us on that. Y'all slacking. Uh, but obviously, when things get into England, that's when you start get trading. You know, within the East India Trading Company and Captain every, Jack Sparrow, uh, some this piracy, of course. Uh, then also you get everything being taken into the colonies. I'm surprised that they didn't use it 
earlier in life. Imagine like how how hard you could have worked your serfs and feudalism if you'd had coffee for them. Right? Had they figured it out? It originated in Africa, so it wasn't something that grew independently the same way ales and beer did, where everybody had their own alcohol. Only Africa had coffee until they discovered coffee. <laughs> And it took some nosy shenanigan goats. I super appreciate Africa sharing coffee with us. Because yes. yeah. I mm-hmm. basically mainline a pot of it a day. Same. Thanks, Africa. In case you guys are wondering why I'm three feet tall. <laughs> Adam's gone. Goodbye, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you just reminded me of Smokey and the Bandit. How? Oh, <laughs> how did you get Smokey and the Bandit? I, I mean, how did we get there? I haven't seen it in you a tell while. Him Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you sounded taller on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right then. Fair. As you were nope, saying, I'll allow it. That one was good. Oh uh, man, I don't even know. Sorry, we got we got into yeah. England. So yeah, it's in the England. All throughout coffee's history, though, people have tried to ban it, including in Fuck Italy. Us. Yeah, uh, but Italy. Yes, in Italy, it was in like what year did they try to 1615 do that? Hmm. that they tried to ban it in Italy. But people like brag their heads off if they serve Lavazza now. I know Lavazza, Lavazza. There's some Z's, B's, and A's. I don't know what order they're in. <laughs> I don't uh, think it's very it's a, good. <laughs> it took Pope Clement VII, though. Mm. Uh, he actually drank some coffee, and then he decided by papal decree that it was not a drink of the devil. Oh, good. So coffee okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by 1675, there were 3,000 coffee houses in England. Okay. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty 1675. decent. 1675. Yeah. Pretty decent size. I'd like the data on how many breweries there were in England at that time. Probably more. <laughs> <laughs> By 1674, though, there was a, uh, well, as I was talking about, bannings and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems like any time a new drug shows up, women love to stop it, as we saw with the temperance <laughs> wow. movement. <laughs> so 1674, there's the women's petition against coffee. Okay, do you think this is really the woman's fault, though? No. Like, no, like, no, hold on, no, no, hold on, just let me, <laughs> let, let me go through this, because uh, this is actually more of a joke. Well, no, <laughs> I just, I feel like, I feel like the men are to blame for prohibition. Right, right. Like, I, I, oh, sorry, honey, I hit you, it wasn't my fault, it was the alcohol. It was the alcohol. Oh, well, then we gotta get rid of the alcohol, <laughs> not the <laughs> husband. <laughs> so I feel like that was, like, men kind of... Put planted that seed. So and, do we have a similar men, thing here? Yes, okay. yes. And very likely men planted the women's petition against coffee because it was an anonymous pamphlet. Uh, ha, ha. <laughs> Definitely a man. And own your they, shit. And they accused men of becoming impotent from coffee. What? That's not how coffee works. <laughs> it is a stimulant. And it is more very likely that it was government propaganda because coffee houses were becoming so popular and trendy mm-hmm. that it was the hangout of revolutionaries. Ah, they didn't ah. want people talking. That's right. OG Lawrenceville hipsters. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of OG hipsters talking about getting their UBIs <laughs> <laughs> and actually owning land. <laughs> the audacity. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a bit of tongue-in-cheek propaganda that was printed. Not, not, not by women. <laughs> no. No. It's all right. We'll take the blame. We're getting used to it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this, pretty, this, this is way ahead of prohibition. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we jump ahead to 1773. Heard of it. Okay. Heard of it. Boston Tea Party. Oh, I've heard of that too. Because despite how popular coffee became, tea was still number one among the colonies and England itself. Right, of course. Until they decided to tax too much. And they dumped all that tea in the harbor. Mm-hmm. Where they should have put the 26.2. <laughs> Where they should have left it. <laughs> and it was stated by future third president of the United States, Thomas Jeffy. Thomas Jeffy. <laughs> Heard of him, too. Tommy Jeffs. <laughs> Not the best For his guy. friends. Did some okay things. <laughs> the Did TJs. some terrible things. One of his okay things, though, was stating that coffee was the favorite drink of the civilized world. And thus making coffee the number one drink in America. Hell yeah. Mm. One of the uh, countries that was late to the coffee party, though, was Japan. They didn't really get coffee introduced to them until 17th century and by then, the Dutch. And then they went mm. fucking hard. Then they went hard. Because Japan does not <laughs> fuck around with coffee. You are they, right. <laughs> they have vending machines like like 
like you would just see like boss five vending machines at every train station, which for us would be like an underground or a subway or whatever your metro, like five of them. And three of them are just completely filled with different variations of coffee. Nice. One of them yeah. will dispense hot coffee. And then one of them's like a bunch of canned cold brews Coke and, shit and like that. some shit. No, no, not a lot of beer, actually. Oh. No, no. Can't, uh, like cold brew. Coffee. Oh, like yeah. cold, cold brew coffee. coffee? Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's My personal saying. favorite is Georgia, which is kind of fucked because it's owned by the Coca-Cola company and you can't buy it here. What the hell's up with that, Coke? Weird. Bullshit. Oh. It's fucking good, though. Shit is like crack. <laughs> is that? I don't typically like sugar. I drink black coffee, but this stuff does have... You can buy, like, a black variety or a sugar and cream variety or whatever. Mm -hmm. It is so good. Well, I'll be on the lookout for it if I can get it on Amazon, maybe. Oh, Uh, actually, I think you might be able to. Probably, probably. But, yeah, their first... Japan's first European coffee house opened up in 1888 and then closed four years later. Oh, Huh. But by the year Ooh. 1930, they had 30,000. Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. And now they're one of the top per capita consumers oh, in the world. Oh, they go hard. They go so hard. Yeah. That's ace. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a great... When you drink coffee like I drink it, it is... A fan, there's nowhere you can go in Japan that doesn't serve coffee. They have <laughs> cat cafes. They got coffee. They sure. got cats. Sure. Funny cafe. Groundhog sure. cafe. Them little fuckers are stabby, but it was fun. <laughs> Wait, they have groundhog cafes? You mean hedgehog? Yeah, hedgehog. Stabbies. Oh. Whistle pigs. What's the thing with the stabby backs? Porcupine? Hedgehog. Porcupine? No. Yeah, hedgehog. hedgehogs. Yeah, hedgehogs. Yeah, hedgehogs are stabby yeah. backs. Yeah. Not groundhog. Groundhog. Groundhogs are the... Groundhog is a woodchuck, yeah. which yeah. I learned in yeah. Punxsutawney. Yeah, whistle pigs. Where I was pigs. sober because nobody told me I was supposed to get shit based before I got there. <laughs> I thought everyone knew that. No, I didn't know. Oh. Uh, Fun fact. As far, <laughs> as far as distribution of coffee, mm-hmm. we said it started in Ethiopia and then moved to the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, then, because of colonization, it moved to Brazil. And where, I'm sorry, where was Aladdin in all of this? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Brazil, sorry. Yeah. Uh, by 1850, what? <laughs> 1852, Brazil is the largest producer of coffee mm. for the entire world. And that's the rest of the world combined as well. Oh, damn. Yes. Okay. It's big. That lasted all the way until the 1950s. Yeah. Until until other countries started coming up, mm-hmm. um, but it was in 1999 that Vietnam overtook Colombia as the second most producer. Oh, oh okay. And by 2011, Vietnam shares 15 percent of the market share oh, of coffee wow. production. I actually had no really? idea. On that. I didn't realize that either. Huh. Uh, one thing I did <clears throat> learn that I thought was kind of interesting in the production of coffee: beans are very similar to malt. How so? In that they're they're taken out of the fruit wet, hmm. right? Yeah. So then they have to be dried, mm-hmm. and so there's a lot of times that coffee companies will just leave them on a cement floor and push them around with a broom, just ah, like malt, just okay. like malting is done. Oh, yeah, um, and then they're roasted, and and they are roasted to different levels, right? Yeah, Makes so sense. I was like, oh, that's a lot like malt. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's a good tie-in. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. guys ready for a gee whiz did you know that's okay. going to like fuck some people up because I know people don't know this. Oh, sure. Dark roast has the least amount of caffeine. Mm-hmm. All you people out there thinking you're drinking dark coffee, I'm going to get so caffeinated. You're wrong. I know so many people that think that. You're all wrong. Light yeah. roast is where it's Light at. Light roast, yeah. blonde yep. roast, roast, most caffeine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Caffeine can get cooked out. Yes. Right. So we come to coffee and beer. Insert ray of horn here. Yes. Blah, 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 sure. Blah. Oh, this is so fucking good. <laughs> Uh, really, coffee and beer basically started at the homebrew level. I can see that. Yeah, God damn, geniuses. That, that's where people got. You know, that's where like kind of got it started. I like yeah, beer. I'm gonna put this shit together. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you're looking for quick homebrew tips, if you want to use coffee in your homebrews, you can use it in the mash. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna lose your aromatics a little bit from that. But you will boil out the oils. Oh. And that's how you retain, yeah. that's how you keep head retention. Yes. Yeah. As we saw in that brew kettle beer, it didn't have much head retention, so it's very possible that they added it in a different step. Mm-hmm. Look y- at that tie-in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you, uh, you can add it uh, during fermentation or post-fermentation by dry beaning, mm-hmm. and you can decide the level of the grind on your bean. The finer the grind, the quicker you will get coffee flavor. But that also leads for the possibility of, mm-hmm. like, all that grind getting into it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like if you leave it in there it. longer, you have a stronger chance of bitterness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, a couple couple ways to use it. Or you can just make your own cold brew by steeping and then add cold brew later. That's what I have done in the past whenever I made uh, coffee beers was I, I had a, a cold brew coffee I made about 24 hours before we went into bottling mm-hmm. and then just added it in to the uh, the bottling bucket right before we, we bottled. Yeah. Had a great aromatic to it. I thought it smelled fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's basically how you get the best aromatic out of it. Right. The one problem was you are correct that the head retention was eh. Yeah, not, not there. Not but best. <laughs> it, if that's what stops you from drinking the beer, right? It, it, calm yourself down a little bit. I, You'll be fine. It's a give and take. I don't yes. need the perfect pour to know beer tastes good. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> foo foo shit. <laughs> Put your pinkies down. It's gonna be okay. So we jump now to the commercial side of coffee beer. Okay. okay. And I found four companies that produce the earliest versions of coffee beer. All right. Uh, in 1994. Ooh. New Glarus. Oh, okay. They put out the coffee stout. Okay. okay. You can still get it. It's a seasonal. Oh, shit. They've All never right. stopped making it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, this is old school as hell. <laughs> when we do a Wisconsin episode. Get some. We need to get some New Glarus. We'll just do a New Glarus episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get that in some spotted cow. That's, yeah. that's two. We can get a third one in there yeah. somehow. I'd rather do a New Glarus episode and a Wisconsin episode. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two that came out in 1995, Dogfish Head. They put out their chicory stout. Mm, okay. And Red Hook out of Seattle, they put out their double black stout, mm. which was supposedly brewed with Starbucks coffee. That makes Seattle. sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, both uh, uh, chicory doesn't come around that much anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think the double black stout has since been discontinued. It was discontinued in the early 2000s. They might put it out every now and then, but... I wouldn't expect it. Right. Probably because the collab with Starbucks, after right. they're no longer a small business, it kind of yeah. fizzled. It's not the same. My guess, anyway. Yeah. And the fourth company that I found was Buzz Beer out of Cleveland, Ohio, <laughs> in 1996. Buzz Beer. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what Duff Beer's modeled after? No. Not no, at Duff all. Beer isn't. No, Duff Beer is just model after us. Well, yeah, because Duff Beer yeah. appeared before Buzz Beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I guess it was. Oh, my God. How old is that fucking show? 30 89. plus years. <laughs> oh, Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. One more presidential cycle and it can run for president. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, okay. Got my vote. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, I found some of the top beers on Untapped if you care about that at all. Sure. And if you don't, too bad. We're going to talk about it anyways. Yeah. Uh, top of the list, Speedway Stout, the Vietnamese coffee version. Not surprising. Okay. Not surprising at all. No. <laughs> Speedway Stout is killer on its own. It's and then so good. Every version, I haven't had the Vietnamese coffee version, but every version I've had is a fucking, like, knock out the park. Mm. Their Thai version, which I don't know, you know, I don't know if you'd like it, but it's like coconut and Ooh. ginger. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I'd get it on that. Ugh. I want that. <laughs> uh, Barrel Age Affogato by Trillium. Mm. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. One of the versions of the Bourbon County Stout. Yes. So one yeah. of them. Yeah, it's like I don't know which one it was. Oh. It might have just been even the regular one. Mm. But and uh, the proper dose by Horace. I've yeah. never heard of that. No. Neither have I. All right. Do you know of, where they're out of? Nah, I didn't really look. Oh, that okay. Much. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Figure somebody's into them. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I, I mean, coffee beer is so abundant anymore. Yes. Like I, I, I was reading an article that said like in 2015, it was the sixth most entered style at the GABF. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I could see that. Yeah, me too. I don't, I don't know where that stands nowadays, but I'm sure it's still up there. Like mm-hmm. there's so many coffee beers out there. There's so many stouts out there that use coffee as just like not a, even an afterthought really. Mm-hmm. Well, like it's just there. It. I appreciate this diversity, putting it in fruited yeah. sours yeah. and pale ales and yeah. like and blondes like Spoonwood does. Oh. Yeah, they're cold yeah. drip city. Cold drip city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. so good. I love that one for being how unique it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, again, it stands out from just all the stouts that use it as nothing else. Yeah. Wait, is Spoonwood doing takeout and growler fills? Heck yeah, they are. Oh, I'm so getting a growler and a burger yeah, pizza are. tomorrow. <laughs> Heck yeah. Hell yeah. I don't know if they're... <laughs> I mean, I think they're going to give you a new growler, so... That's, that's okay. Chris, yeah. Chris, it's worth it. Chris left one of the brew gentlemen growlers Some We don't know where. You can, uh, you can also check Industry Public House, oh. because I believe they're doing... That's uh, closer. Oh, but they don't have pierogi pizza. Mm. Oh, well then. <laughs> oh, well then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Spoon what it is. Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I believe there are doing four packs, takeaways, and um, also growlers. Excellent. Yeah. Hey, of, their, of their taps. Good. Spoonwood is yeah. definitely doing takeout. Yeah. Spoonwood is on draft sometimes at Mad Max, too. I looked online. They don't, some have an updated draft list as of the last, last week, and some yes. do not, yeah. but they're all doing $10 growler fills. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Again, check all these, yeah. <laughs> all the resources you can. Get the beer. Spoonwood, yeah. at sidebar. Spoonwood right now has their cobbler beer. It's like a blueberry cobbler. Mm. It's really good. I don't Ooh. think Adam and I are allowed to talk about blueberry beers anymore. Nope. Because we'll get yelled at. <laughs> but we could talk about <laughs> strawberry beers. Sorry talk to about bring it strawberry up, guys. beers. No, it's okay. We could talk about <laughs> strawberry beers that are sour with coffee in it. Like this next to normal by Hitchhiker. Dude, it's so good. It's so good. It's yep. like the perfect combination of like roasty and sweetness, and it's not overpowering. It's just oh it's good ass beer. I love you. I love you, beer. Aww. <laughs> I love you, hitchhiker. <laughs> I think I still like the blueberry version better, but yeah. I'm not allowed to talk I'll drink them both. Both of them. All them. It's country talk. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, let's load up another one. Yes. And it's time for some funsies. Okay. Okay. We're Am I going to win? No. Damn it. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to episode 146 of the Hop Nation USA podcast. It's segment three of our so coffee beer good. redux. We're doing coffee beers again. We coffee have- beers too. This time it's personal. Mm. <laughs> mm. I mean, we've had a lot of coffee beers on, yeah. the, set, on the show. It's either that or electric boogaloo, and that doesn't make any sense. Hell yeah, the boogaloo's <laughs> coming, yo. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> can't even spell boogaloo. Looking at some boogaloo memes. Those are going to go up on stocks. <laughs> Not the Stonk confused stops. juggalo Stonk. memes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Though I did read one that said that if you've ever been a juggalo, you are immune from COVID-19. I believe. Mm. Sounds right. I believe. Yeah. So you're saying the cure is Fago? Obviously, and a fat bitch named Bridget. <laughs> Fago and meth. That's why it took so long for West Virginia to get one. Jeez. So. Oh, oh. What? Oh. I'm just saying they had natural immunities. Do they have it now? They yes. do. just got yes. their first case. Maybe they got one in the Eastern typo blood, earlier this week. Maybe it's because typo blood type is like has a stronger resistance to it. Mm. And maybe they're so inbred that everybody has the same blood type. That's possible. When your family tree don't branch, why would you get an AB out of an O? Also, <laughs> West Virginia, thanks for listening. You guys have a great life. We know you're Peace. out. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> you guys remember that time that Abercrombie got sued for releasing a t-shirt that said it's all relative in West Virginia? Oh. Just me? Okay. <laughs> Anyways. You know what a smell that Abercrombie had when you walk past but it? Just real quick. It's a gorgeous state. Beckley's a fucking fantastic Beckley's place. Great. West Virginia, we're just kidding. We like you. Stop. Don't stop listening. Please and thank you. you I go to Kruger sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the third beer for the episode. For the third time in a row. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. Don't worry. Third time's a charm. That's right. For this third beer. Coming from Left Hand Brewing Company out of beautiful Longmont, Colorado. That's one of the square ones out west. Not Nevada. Or, or Utah. Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have more sides than squares? I know this at least. <laughs> But uh, this is their hardwired nitro. Ooh. Yeah, so we're getting into Ooh. some nitro action. Uh, Not. It's going to make the poppy fizzy sound. That is possible, <laughs> yes. I'll give you some quick hitters. Uh, it's a porter. It's 6% ABV, 33 IBUs. And Kelsey is going to give us some additional information on this bad boy. It is is brewed with Allegro coffee, mm-hmm. and it melds notes of caramelized sugar, cacao, and hints of blueberry that lead to a light, roasty finish. Wait, did you say blueberry? Yes. I did. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Well, there's no getting around this now. Adam and I are going to have to talk about blueberry beer. <laughs> should, I, should I not have said that word, Steve? No, it's fine. No. I was just touching my face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure right. you spread the ronies all around. <laughs> These guys got the Ronies. Are you not calling it the Ronies? <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, everybody in Middle Pennsylvania is calling Ronies. it Ronies. Ronies. Oh, yeah. good Ronies. Lord. Hell so, yeah. Somebody pour these beer. For crying out I got loud. that from somebody who has family in Wilkesbury, so <laughs> I just assumed the Ronies is spread. So. <laughs> oh. It made the sound. <laughs> Somebody's happy. A little ASMR. Yes. All right. We've got the Nitro in our hands. Yes. And this is definitely the darkest beer of the episode. It's a classic coffee stout. Yes. 
When Katie poured hers, it had really beautiful layering mm-hmm. to it. Yes. It was gorgeous. It still got a nice foamy, foamy tight head. Yeah. Got that nitro action going Looks on. Looks nice and creamy. Yeah, it's it's like a real light cream color on the head. It's not it's not a dark tan. It's, it's nice. a lot whiter than I definitely expected it to yeah. be. Mm-hmm. Good looking unit. Moon unit? Dweezel? What was that a Frank Zappa reference? No. No, it was one of his sons' reference. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Actually, those are two different children. They are. Moon unit's a daughter. <laughs> Obviously. Okay, yeah. Well, and then there's Ahmed Zappa as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, back to this beer. I'm gonna, I'm not really Smells getting good. the blueberries. Is that I'm? I, I, <laughs> you, did you Kelsey forget put her how nose to in smell? It. Kelsey <laughs> is cleaning the Corona off of yeah. her nose with her beer. It's okay. I went we, in <laughs> pretty deep to get a good sniff because I was looking for those blueberries, and I well, it was too far. So the dear can, CDC, I, I can't blueberry. touch my face, but can I put my nose in my beer? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be at least sixty percent alcohol to kill the germs. So yes. you're looking more like a one fifty one than a left hand. Yes. Yeah. The Shoot. can doesn't mention the blueberry, so I'm wondering. I don't know. Oh. The official left hand. But it hand, is a blue can. The left hand website mentioned it. So but it, like. Maybe there's not. I'm willing to believe. Maybe there's the not website. actually blueberries in it so hint. much as it's, it just kind of happened to be a, a resulting flavor. Well, let's find out. It's a out. superior smooth beer with chocolate malt, coffee, and toffee notes. Okay. That's what that says. So I took a sip and I like it. It's good and smooth. It's like a classic nitro porter. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah. It's smooth and creamy. Does the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I, I keep drinking it. Yeah. I, 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 Anybody getting blueberry? Not really. No. No, not really. <laughs> no. But honestly, taking a look at the can, I can't really see it that much on the can. So I think we're good. I think they get a pass. It's a blue can. Yeah. It's a blue can, but I think they've just been using that forever. <laughs> I think we're getting hung up on the blueberry thing. Yes, we are. No blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> I was alarmed. We okay? did it to ourselves. All right. Well, let's, you know, if nobody likes it, let's warm it up a little bit. We'll see how okay. it goes. Okay. I don't dislike and it's, it. And it's time to uh, time to play a game. Katie wins. Mm, Kelsey wins. No, because there's actually no Katie winners here. Katie and Kelsey combine into Casey and win. Yep. I mean, you can do that. Yep. We're doing okay. It. Steve Cool. <laughs> Steve, don't give a shit yet. All right. So we are going to play, a. N- I think it's a new game. I don't think we ever played this on this show. Sure. All right. <laughs> okay. You don't know. No, I don't. So like way to keep track of our own product. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've done this, so I don't know. I don't we'll know. find out. But uh, this is a game called Shotgun Sip and Drain Pour. Oh. oh. Yes. I don't think we... We haven't played this. So no. This is like Fuck, Mary Kill. Thank you. That is exactly Shotgun. what it's like. Shotgun... Shotgun sip, sip or drain pour. pour. I'm going to give so you. So sip is the like saver. Like I want to hang the, on the, to this. The, the the Mary or is okay. I mean yeah. I'm just interpreting so shotgun that. Shotgun is fuck. Sip yes. is not like yeah. I just sip want the tiniest Mary. bit of this. It's more like I want to savor this and draw it out. Correct. Drain okay. pour yeah, yeah. is kill. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You guys all all got it figured out. Uh, and we say smart. We know grammar and stuff. Y- y'all did it. Uh, and Figure that out with your poli sci degree, <laughs> fucker. Wow. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna allow it. That was the right amount of sh- <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> so I uh, I did a little sleuthing, mm-hmm. and I looked back on uh, all of your guys's uh, previous histories oh. of beer oh. drinking. So all the beers that I present to all of you, you have drank before. Oh. Is this oh. coming from Untapped or the show? This is coming from Untapped. Okay. Uh. Uh, you Steve, I had to. Yeah, you, you don't even know how many beers are not checked. Yeah, <laughs> I have so many beers not checked. I get that. Untapped. Yeah, oh, Steve man. was a little more difficult because he hasn't checked anything in two years. <laughs> uh, so, I, Kelsey, you are first up okay. of shotgun sip and drain pour. Okay. These are your three beers that you get to choose from. Your first one is the Southern Tier Samoa. This. Okay. The Hitchhiker Cocachino. <laughs> or the Spoonwood Cold Drip City. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no! Just so you know that for this first round, these are three of the highest rated beers that you have had on Untapped. So 
Oh, God. <laughs> I am confident. I, I would shotgun any of those. I would vomit. I mean, just the cons- They're all so thick. Same. Like, not like the taste wise. I just can't. I think I think you could shotgun the cold drip. Yes. yes. The only by one, being okay. But the, I, I still want to savor it, though. I yeah. want to savor right. all of them. But, That's why it's a hard choice. Yeah. But Kelsey, this is your choice and your choice I alone. Know. I'm so glad I didn't check in the next to normal yet. I, I actually almost just checked in and I was I like, I haven't gotten to you yet. I know. I'm actually terrified. Can I see? my list i just need to like visually see oh Oh, if american lights on that list that might might be the next round of like here's all the trash (laughs) i don't want to brag but adam and i have the same rating for american (laughs) light on there Exact acknowledgement. <laughs> Zero point yes. two five is the lowest rating. It'll let you go if you intend to read it. You are yes, so had this. mean. Adam. I know. I didn't say it was going to be easy. So okay. what he means to say is there's no winners. No winners. Okay. I'm going to shotgun the cold drip city. Okay. So you don't puke because I think out of the three, it will go down the quickest and the easiest. All right. I'm going to sip. Mm. The Cocachino. Ooh, okay. And I can't believe I'm drain pouring the Samoa because I don't want to, but I just... You, they, somebody's got to go. I actually forgot that was an option. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, know. Yeah. I have I to know. dump something. So I don't want to dump any of it. I know. But... So to recap, your, your shotgun is going to be the Spoonwood Cold Drip City. You're going to sip the Hitchhiker Cocachino, and you're going to drain pour the Southern Tier Samoa this. I don't like this option <laughs> at all. No, I, I don't want to support her decision because this way she's supporting like genuine local. Mm-hmm. I I don't want to. Dra- I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. What would you do in my situation? Reverse it. I still I still shotgun the cold drip city, but mm, I I gotta sip on that Samoa this. Uh, that's where I can't like because the Samoa this I love the coconut. I love 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 that beer. But the Cocachino's against it. I will, like, drain, pour, I will yeah. drain pour coconut yeah. any day of the week. <laughs> Not a problem. I got Can you. Can I just marry them both and be like a, a polygamist? <laughs> sure. Can I set both this of them? This is in Utah. We're back in Utah. <laughs> Hooray, Utah. Both of them? I don't want to drain pour either of them. <laughs> One's got to go. One's got to go. You just just leave it in the fridge until it skunks. You don't have to to (laughs) pour it down the drain. You just don't get to consume it. You don't have to kill it. Just can't. I'm really sorry, Southern Tier. I freaking love that beer so much. (laughs) Kelsey's going to cry. Somebody get her a waffle. No, Katie, I'm, are you I'm ready? French toast, damn it. Oh, no, it was the pancake maker. The That's pancake maker. Yeah. Oh, Katie, up? are you ready for well, yours? For Obviously this. not, but I'm okay. here. So. Your three choices are the Prairie Christmas Bomb, oh. Oh. the Alaskan Amber Ale, or the Erie Brewing Company Old Red Cease and Desist. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my hell. <laughs> one um, you must shotgun, one you must sip, and one you must... Drain pour. The game of no winners. <laughs> Shotgun Amber. Okay. Sip Old Red Rider. Drain pour Prairie. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I am, that actually wasn't that hard for me. I am very surprised by I that. I will never drain pour an Alaskan beer. That is such a fucking hot commodity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I, like, like until they distro in Pennsylvania. I'm never drain pouring in Alaska. I will, I will give high high credit to their Kolsch. They make a fantastic Kolsch. As that well. is actually my most favorite beer. I actually never even I checked that in like two yesterday or two days ago. <laughs> oh, I know. I never <laughs> checked that in. You like, also have discussed that on pretty much the last three episodes I, of the podcast. <laughs> I know because that's what that I have the easy most one. of because I have to drink mm-hmm. the beers that I have and I mm-hmm. can't keep buying more beer. Um, yeah, I'm just never going to waste an Alaskan. So, that so was, you're going to shotgun the Alaskan. Yeah. You're going to sip the old red cease and desist I am and you're going to drain pour the prairie Christmas bomb. Yes, because <laughs> wow, I really enjoyed the old red season to say it's really and good beer. A lot of the the spice content I think is kind of comparable between the two, but yeah, I could have more than one of them. <laughs> That's really kind of. I mean, they're both like fucking ten yeah. percent. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And just one's a little easier to like keep drinking on. So, Steve, are you ready for yours? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Prairie's going to clog the fucking drain. It's just like... <laughs> glug, 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 glug. <laughs> All right, Steve, your three options are the Southern Tier Thick Mint, 
Yeah. The Caution Brewing, The Earl, mm. or Trogue's Mad Elf. I see what kind of game you're playing, you <laughs> <that> fucker. <laughs> so Adam came to toy with emotions. Yeah. That's right. What the fuck would your four be? Honestly, <laughs> honestly, this isn't that hard, though. Okay. It's not that that hard. I would totally drain pour the Mad Elf. Okay. I've had more than enough of it. I support Fair. that. I'm yeah, good. I support 100%. that. Fair. Figment V Earl. That was the one I knew was going to be tough. I mean, I, I know what I would do here. Yeah. I I'm puke shotgunning that. Thing. I would say <laughs> I would say I'm going to shotgun the Earl. Going to shotgun Ooh. the Earl. Okay. Yeah. I think and simply because like there's it, it's a lighter beer mm -hmm. overall and there's just enough flavor on it that it, it will linger. Like, it, they're both powerfully strong flavors, so I don't feel bad about drinking one quicker than the other. Okay. But I think, you know, just because it's a lighter beer. All right. That I would have an easier time shotgunning it versus <laughs> shotgunning the <laughs> thick mint. Thick mint. <laughs> yeah, it's called thick mint. Because For a reason. It's a 10% yes. cookie nightmare. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure it only comes in bottles, so watching you shotgun that would be really interesting. That's yeah. a snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a straw pedo. Yeah. Well, I've, I've called it snorkeling, but I didn't know yeah. it was called straw pedo, but okay. Oh, snorkel, right. straw yeah, pedo, okay. I think it's yeah. the same thing. Also known as a bad idea. <laughs> Wait, is that, what, is that how you. Idea. Yeah. Is that how you would have went, Kelsey? Or would you would have reversed? I'd have reversed it. I might have. I don't know. The Earl is just such a unique. It's beer. not. It's not as, as unique as it, is, it once was. It once was exactly yeah. like a couple years ago. Like you know, where rare white elk. Yeah. But now more tea beers are out there. So like, I get it. I get yeah. your rationale. This is also make believe land where we would drain for any of these <laughs> right. beers. So you can always shock on these beers without puking. Yeah. This is, this is all gun to the head stuff. So. <laughs> Kelsey, yeah. are you ready to start round two? No, because I hate She's you. She's clearly not. I okay, hate you. round She's on two. untapped to see what damage is coming next. <laughs> round two, your choices are National Bohemian. <laughs> yep, this is shitty beer round. Yep. <laughs> shitty beer round. <laughs> Kona Big Wave Golden Ale. Yeah. Or the Hofbrau Oktoberfest. Oh, okay. oh, wow. Oh, wow. Hated it that much? She did not like it. Okay. Not. <laughs> Wait, what was the middle in Kona? The uh, Kona Big Wave Golden Ale. Oh, yeah, I can see that. That's drinkable. It's eh. very macroy, uh, but it's drinkable. I think I'm going to drain for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drink for that one. Right. Okay. Wow. I'm going to shotgun the Natty Bow. <laughs> Nice. I mean, that is actually the proper way to drink now. <laughs> and I'm going to sip the Oktoberfest. Fantastic. All right. Kelsey just made a lot of people in Baltimore happy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I already know what's hey, coming he's going to shock on that Natty <laughs> Boe. <laughs> Natty Bo is just such a, a uh, regional gem. I don't like what's about to happen, but Gallows, I know it's right? coming. I yeah. know it's coming. Did I really rank Oktoberfest that lowly? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. When? I don't. Top row. Yeah. Top row. Yeah, yeah, you were not a fan. Yeah, I don't think I did like it. Katie, are you ready for I your after three? Some shot skis. I probably. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I like the darker beers at Hot Row. I like the yeah. Dunkel is Hop, like my Dunkel's top and yeah. Hefeweizen. The Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen just doesn't wow yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. That's. But I'm choosing a shotgun and a natty bow. So like, <laughs> all right. What do you know? Glad I haven't checked a Miller Lite in. Like. <laughs> and that brings us to Katie. <laughs> Katie, your Miller three light, choices Sorry. are we know what's coming. the Miller 64, mm -hmm. the Saga Tuck Blueberry Maple Stout, oh. <laughs> and your favorite, there it is. the American Light. <laughs> Which one are you going to you shotgun? You know how blueberries going down the fucking drain. <laughs> that's not even a fucking that's, hesitation. That's, that's just going down the drain. Wow. Yeah, that, oh, okay. I couldn't. But I just couldn't. what do you sip? What are you sipping? What are you shotgun? Oh, I'll sip M64. I can drink water all day. Wow. Okay. So you're going to shotgun that American light? Yeah, it's going down fast. Get rid got to get rid of it. All right. Yeah. The one person I've ever seen, well, n not one, but I've seen three people shotgun American light. Me, Sam, and our other friend, Bo. <laughs> on an American Light? Yeah. Oh, I've shotgunned an American Light before. And, uh, well, I didn't see you do it. No, you didn't. I but I saw, I saw Bo and Sam do it, and I saw both of them throw up from doing it. So <laughs> I consider right myself um, privileged because I actually didn't even know American Light existed until like a year ago. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I happened at a house party. 
Oh, well, it was a birthday I didn't know party they still that made it. My house oh, for sure. And so I was like, oh, I have American Light. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And I like did a quick Google and I'm like, oh, Jesus. Like, <laughs> Do oh, I no. want to try it? I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'll try anything once. <laughs> like, mm -mm. Jeff and I look for American Light sometimes to take to like, just be like, to break up the Miller Light, the Bud Light, yeah. the whatever. You hobos. try to torture people to, dis <laughs> to add variety? Sometimes, yeah. All right. Oh, God. That's fair. <laughs> Yeah, gotta spice it up a little bit. No, if, I, if, I, if I'm taking a case of beer and I just don't give a fuck if people are drinking it, I got PBR. I mean, we'll do I PBR. Do. PBR, me ASAP. Drop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Steve, are you ready? All right, Dello. Dello. Of course. All right, your three options are. There should be Red Hot Iron goes down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it? Red, Red Hot, Hot Iron. Iron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, we your, knew that was coming. Your three options are the Magic Hat, Mother Lager. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the Baltica. Mm -hmm. You know which one. Mm -hmm. And the Iron City, Red Hot Iron. You know where I think you went wrong here? What's that? You should have put the Devil's Backbone Lager in there. <laughs> the Vienna Lager, Lager, Vienna Lager. The Vienna Lager, Lager. <laughs> so that, it, as bad as that one was, it still wasn't as bad as the three he just named. No. Really? So I, yeah. yeah. That, uh, that one what was... What about the Scorpion Pepper beer? You almost I got that, that one. one again. You almost got that. There's a Goza that's yeah. pretty long on my list, too, that I was like, oh, shit. He might have to pull. Oh, that would go down the drain I'm immediately. Actually, I'm not sure if I checked in the Ghostface Killer beer, but right now I'm <laughs> pretty happy I didn't have to deal with that. I might I might have shotgun that elevator scorpion beer just to do it. <laughs> you know? Get the burn I don't fast. hate it. Yeah. I don't hate that just idea. Just mm -hmm. That Ghostface um, Killer took me like three hours to drink it. <laughs> it really did. It was rough. We believe you. <laughs> so you're down to the Mother Lager and the Baltica. Yeah. Oh shit. Um. Oh god. <laughs> Those are both so gross. On uh, last week, was that last week or two weeks ago? The beer Steve never wanted to <laughs> drink again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, look, as bad as that Baltica Eight is, because that's the wheat version. Because it, it's like all Baltica, I think, is just numbered beers, and each number is a different style. And we had eight, which was the wheat beer, and it, it was, was awful. God awful. Yeah. And it still wasn't worse than the Red Hot Iron, <laughs> but I'm going to have to shotgun that one. You're shotgunning the Baltica. Yeah, rip, just to get rid of it. Rip the Band-Aid. And I'll, I'll sip a mother lager, I guess. All right. It'll take me like nine hours to get through. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a beer if we went bowling, I would drink half of over the course of a game, get a new beer, <laughs> finish the right. new beer, and then finish the, the mother wow. lager. As you're after. walking out the door. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, we're good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so... All right, we have one more round. This is the recent memory round. These are three of the newest beers that you have had. Uh, they're not the three newest. I gotta look and see what's new, though. But uh, he's about to tell you. I, I, I will tell you because you are up, Kelsey. Uh, are you ready? No. The first beer is the Southern Tier <laughs> Nitro Hot Cocoa. We drank a lot of Southern Tier on this show. Uh, it's easy to get. It yeah, is. it's also it delicious. Is. Yeah, that too. Uh, but uh, the Southern Tier Nitro Hot Cocoa. Okay. The Old Nation Boss Tweed, and the Brooklyn Brewery Rose Deville. Ooh, okay. So all over the fucking place. In there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would shotgun the boss tweed. Ooh. Yep. Ooh. I'm saying it. All right. <laughs> it's happening. I'm down for that kind of party. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a party after that. I'm going to sip that Southern Tier hot cocoa. Redeems herself. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, su I, su I support this. And I'm going to dump that Brooklyn Rose. Okay. I, yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. I don't even think yeah. I had a rose. Did we have a rose beer at beer tasting? Mm. If, mm. I don't which, remember. by the way, I'm pretty sure is where I checked in the Miller 64. <laughs> uh, I checked the Brooklyn in at Brooklyn <clears throat> Brewing when Jeff and I were there in November. <clears throat> and we each got one of the different tasters. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. drank a ton. And then we made friends with the bartender. So then she was pouring us kind of whatever we wanted. And then we were talking to one of the owners and then he Garrett Oliver. Pouring. Did you meet Garrett <laughs> Oliver? <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> Just say yes. He's cool. Yes, yes <laughs> we did. Awesome. Katie, are you ready for your recent history test? I suppose so. Maybe. All right. Your first beer is the whole hog JP's Casper White Stout. Oh, that was good. The Hitchhiker Triple Shakes and the Venza Sir Lulo Sour. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. 
<laughs> um, Did that cereal just bash up my bang? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sipping the Ventasur. All right, you're gonna oh sip on God. that now. There, it comes. They the don't make place. a single beer you could pour down the drain. They are just. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? The you're Casper right. and what else? It was the it was the Whole Hog JP's Casper White Stout. Yeah, and the Hitchhiker Triple Shakes. I'm gonna chug the Casper. I'm gonna pour the triple shakes. You're gonna pour the triple shakes. Yeah. Well, so this is kind of like, yeah. Wow. And, and don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed triple shakes. That was a phenomenal beer, but I can't chug it, and it's just 120 percent not chugging. <laughs> that is just it's illegal, and no. And the Casper is the easiest thing to chug there. So. Okay. We all understand this is Sophie's choices. <laughs> oh, yeah. There are no winners here except for me watching all of you struggle. <laughs> Which one of your children do you want to murder? Right, yeah. <laughs> no. Only one. Uh, only two can stay. Well, that one went to bed until three, and the other one stopped at two. So that one's got to go. Except for round two where it's all bad kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just leave them out in the rain. Yeah. Mm. I like this game. I think we should play this game again. And also, next time, Steve's in charge, and Adam should be tortured. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. That sounds fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And speaking of Steve, yep. the last round of the evening, your choices are the Saga Tuck Neapolitan Milk Stout, mm-hmm. mm. the Six Point Atomic Res, mm-hmm. and the Southern Tier 3X IPA. Mm. Mm. See, it's funny because I did just have a Neapolitan not too, too long ago. I know, because I saw it on Instagram. Oh, I put it up. Oh, I, oh yeah, I guess I did because I was eating it with cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you Wait, were. What kind of cookies? Uh, banana, the banana wafer cookies. Mm-hmm. That sounds like it would go pretty good. It did. Huh. I had a good time. Um, and the other two came from a run at oh, JR's. Right. <laughs> Crowler time. <laughs> right. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. I am. Go- oh, this is kind of hard, actually, because I don't necessarily love all of these. I'm going to sip the three times IPA. Okay. That's really, really good. I enjoy that a lot. I support that decision. Yeah. The Neapolitan, I don't love, love it. Yeah. But that yeah. Atomic Res. Uh, hmm. You got to shotgun one of them. I don't want to shotgun Atomic <laughs> Res. It's 11 and a 8. That sounds really hard. That it, was kind of my motivation for I mean, I'm here the for that party, like, but if you like. Had, if you had just said the shakes, like, okay. That's like five or six percent. Like I can think about, it, but like I'm not shotgunning a ten and a half yeah. percent beer. Like, I mean, no. again, I'm here for that party, but oh, like yeah. we're gonna have us a time with I, that. I think I'm gonna drain pour the atomic res just because. Wow. It, okay. Yeah. No, it, I get it. it. I get it. I get it. It wasn't that that good. Mm-hmm. You know, it, like you would hate this fucking beer, Adam. Fair. This is like. Hitchhiker makes bane of the existence or whatever. Mm-hmm. This would be the bane of your existence. <laughs> this, it's hoppy at a triple IPA. Nope. So, nope. yeah. Don't need it. <laughs> yeah, you would hate it. Do not need it. So, yeah, I'd drain pour that and then shotgun the Neapolitan. Excellent. Just because I really do enjoy the, the three times IPA, and I'd just like to sit back and enjoy that one. Okay. And that is how we play Sip, Shotgun, and Drain Pour. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get you back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Hey. Also, we still have Dennis and Sam and Bubba and all those other people to play oh. with, too. So. Oh, I know. I'm keeping that one in the back pocket. <laughs> it's a good rainy day. <laughs> yes, it is. Cool. Yeah, good new game. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. So, actually, if uh, if anybody on the social media, if you want to throw three beers my way, post it up on Twitter, tag us. I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you my, my get sip you shotgun my and drain pour. So we finished the hardwired nitro by Left Hand Brewing. Thoughts? I thought it was enjoyable. It was creamy. It was creamy. It was enjoyable. I could definitely drink more than one. However, I don't think it's in a category that I would seek it out. Uh, I'm not going to get all excited whenever I see it on the shelf. But I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, For me, uh, yeah, kind of the same. It's just kind of a middle-of-the-road coffee beer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It's not particularly stand out in any way. Apparently, on I've had this before on Untapped, but that's years and years ago, so I haven't remembered. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. I picked it up because we had that awesome uh, horchata. Yes. From them a couple episodes ago. Kelsey was here for that. Uh, So, yeah, that's why I picked it up again. I was like, yeah, let's try this. Uh, So, 
Yeah, otherwise it doesn't stick out too much. There's, It's good enough coffee flavor, though. Should we right. uh, venture over to the podium area? Yes. Okay. Who wants to go first? I can go first. You should go first, Steve. Cool. Okay. I would say bronze. I'm going to actually give it to the Brew Kettle Perfect Strangers. Okay. Yeah. It is, even though I just kind of gave a non-glowing review to the hardwired. The the perfect strangers is not that easy to drink a lot of, mm-hmm. you know. It, it, oh, it, I know. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> but I I feel like yeah, after two or so, it, the bitterness is just going to build up too much and it kind of burns your palate out. Mm. There's the you didn't get palate burnout with the other two beers we had tonight. I still think that it's good, and that means I think all the beers we had tonight were good. But this one, it just will burn you out too quick. Originally, I said, like, when I picked it up, I was picking it up because I thought it was going to be comparable to the Cold Drip City, but I forgot that was a blonde and this said pale ale, so completely different things. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I liked where you were headed with that right. thought process. Yeah, I, was just, I was just looking for something different, yeah. and we did find something different, but it's all right. Silver, I'm going to give to the left-hand hardwired nitro because it's just kind of middle of the road. It's fine. Like, you can drink a bunch of it. It's not going to hurt you. But it isn't probably going to wow you either. That's all. Okay. Especially if you want to pair it with like some breakfast in the morning. Good replacement for breakfast, Guinness. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Gold medal, though, goes to the Hitchhiker next to normal. It is just a continuing good series of coffee beers. Like it's got fruit flavor. It's got coffee flavor. Everything is incredibly well balanced. It's not too sour. It's not too bitter. It's not too sweet. It's just... Right. It's the baby bear of the coffee <laughs> beers. <this laughs> beer. So, yeah, those are my ranks. I'll go next because my ranking is the same as Steve's. <laughs> Hooray. Um, Welcome to the winning team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with Steve. The brew kettle was de- it was good. I just, after two, that bitterness is just so overwhelming. Like, even after, you know, the end of one, I could see that just being so overpowering. Plus, I wanted more coffee flavor, but probably because I'm just greedy. And I love coffee so much. My silver medal is going to this hardwired nitro. It was smooth. It was creamy. It was a good, like, middle of the road. I could have a few of these. Kind of just take it real easy. Um, I like that it was on nitro. I liked that that foamy creaminess factor gave it. My gold is going to the hitchhiker next to normal. This is just a delicious beer. This is a delicious series. Um, The strawberry was good i mean it was like a hint of it but like the coffee was nice in there and i liked that it wasn't an overwhelming sour beer um the tartness was just like right and it balanced with everything else going on in this beer so good job hitchhiker you're in my gold tonight right on nailed it nailed it um yeah so the uh left hand hardwired nitro is definitely my bronze um, the coffee flavor's there. It's not super strong. I guess I just wanted a little bit more of it. I don't know. It was it was a, not a bad beer. It was good. It's like Steve said, extremely drinkable. Um, it's very smooth. It's not too heavy. Um, it just didn't it didn't wow me. It was good. It wasn't great. Um, Perfect Strangers is gonna be my silver. That is a unique combination. I'm pretty confident I've never had just a straight coffee pale ale before, but I thought that they did a pretty good job of blending the hops and the coffee on that. Um, yeah, like neither one for me was too overpowering, and it did have a little bit of that bitterness, but it wasn't, it didn't kill you. So um, for me, my gold is also the next to normal uh, strawberry sour from Hitchhiker. Um, I am Obviously, if you haven't been able to tell yet, obsessed with this beer. <clears throat> Be really sad when I don't have any more of it at home. Um, but it is just, it just hits the mark. I mean, like my husband is not particularly a, a sour beer person, and he actually really enjoys this one. It's not overwhelmingly sour. Um, it's not like slushy or anything like that. And the coffee just is balanced really well in it. And it is just, oh, it's so good. I'm going to go home and drink another one. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I guess I'm last. And everybody thinks I'm going to be contrarian. I'm not. The uh, the Perfect Strangers, bronze medal position. <laughs> I 
the surprise of no one. Let's be honest here. <laughs> you didn't see that one you coming. You put the hoppy beer at the end? Yeah. You put huh. the hoppy beer in last? Weird. Yeah. No. Welcome to year four where it's the same. In 2025, though, he's going to start to like IPAs more. Might get up over it. over 10. Might, maybe. It's, it's going to happen. But in the time before that happens, we have to uh, get into the silver medal position. The left hand. Yeah, the hardwired nitro. That's that's a fine beer. I have zero problem with it. But it didn't come close. I'm sorry. It just didn't come close to the hitchhiker the next to normal. Uh, that's a fine beer. I, I think we've all glowed over this beer a bit. So I'm going to keep doing it. It's good beer. Keep doing it. I want some. I'm going to get some. I'm going to trade some with Steve. <laughs> get some new fruits. Okay. Yeah. All right. well, not you, hitchhiker. <laughs> what would you like to see on this series, fruit-wise, that well, they haven't done yet? I am you, want not lem- sh- you want the lemon? You want another lemon coffee beer? No. The last one went really well. No. no? Okay. Negativo. Throw that no. out there. It's I can a hard see a, negative. I can see like a raspberry. Well, raspberry's out now. Never We've already mind. talked yeah. about that. What do we have? We have ras- <laughs> We've already <laughs> talked about raspberries. Raspberry, <laughs> strawberry, blueberry, I've, peach. Peach they've done. Yeah. They've done. I heard yeah. it uh, kind of lacked because, again, peach is hard to work with. like a blackberry? Blackberry, I could be into. I cherry, fuck, I, I would fuck cherry. with the cranberry. Yeah, I'd get down oh, with the cranberry. Would be interesting. Be interesting. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they did that one. I don't know. I think something in my brain tells me they did that one as well, but I'm not okay. sure. What about a banana? Quote. Banana and coffee actually is pretty Ooh. complimentary, but yeah. I don't know how banana works as a sour. Yeah, I don't know how banana would work as a sour. Yeah, I could. I'd get down with a banana strawberry. Ooh, mm. like blends. Yeah. But yeah, actually, that yeah. would be pretty The next good. step is yeah. blends. So, yeah. you know, keep Strawberry, all that. raspberry. Called it. Want mango? it. Send it to me. <laughs> no, fuck a mango. No, you don't want a mango with coffee. <laughs> I don't I'm want mango in general. Out there now. <laughs> <laughs> just naming things. Papaya. Lingonberry. <laughs> the acai berry. Lingonberry. Star fruit. <laughs> acai. Dragon fruit. Dra- <laughs> Star fruit, dragon fruit. Kelsey fruit. <laughs> dragon Ball Z fruit. Adam fruit. <laughs> Casey fruit. Steve fruit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Enough of that. Andy, keep all, uh, Ju- Andy write all that fruit. down. <laughs> <laughs> juicy fruit. No, it would lose its flavor in 30 seconds. That's not Ayo. good. <laughs> all right. Keep all that in mind, Andy. But in the meantime, if you want to reach out to us on the social media, all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA, and that'll get you all the things I said at the top of the show. And if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, as you should, then search your favorite podcatcher for Hop Nation USA. And if you're on any of those platforms, leave us a five-star review because... We are a six-idea shows, but right now I can't come up with any. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. (laughs) Wait. That's a hard landing. (laughs) That's a real hard landing. I I know. Put the wheels down, Adam. Put the wheels down. (laughs) No, we're nosing into this mountain. T public slash user slash Hop Nation USA for all our merch. <laughs> Where we have better ideas than what I came right. up with. <laughs> for a six bean show, but they only let us use five. Ah, there it is. See? <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. I'll do better next week. Okay. I feel like I had a good one last week. If, we're, if there's a next week. That's very if true. If we're all alive and allowed out of our homes, right. we'll be back. I won't, but these other five <laughs> folks uh, will. So sad. Yes. Yeah, yeah if some Absolutely reason. It makes back. the heart grow yeah, harder. Well. I still have a stockpile of beer, and I have a microphone, so... So do I. <laughs> so some sort of show will happen. <laughs> I don't have a microphone, but I could go on Instagram live. <laughs> Hell yeah. Kelsey can do, do that, Do you too. have the stockpile of beer is really the most important part here. I do. Okay, if you can do good. at least a beer review. I could do mm-hmm. a beer review easily. Because it, it might come down to Adam doing a beer review, then me doing a beer review. <laughs> <laughs> if you give me a microphone or something, I could do a beer just, review. Just a half hour Adam talking about cars and a half hour me talking about movies <laughs> sure why not what the hell you know, i'll find something to talk about for half an hour when we when we go in the lockdown that's what we'll turn no, maybe, we'll, maybe we can experiment with that next week it made me feel like we'll i have see. a, a we'll problem see. when i went into the class six store today for a snack and the uh woman who runs it she's always there and she's like oh she's like you buying some beer she's like everybody's buying up all my beer and i was just started i kind of like chuckle a little bit she's like you have plenty of beer don't you i was like i have plenty of beer I'm <laughs> <laughs> i don't need problem. more beer i got it yeah But whatever happens, we will see you in some form next week. Otherwise, stay safe, stay indoors. Yes. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Mm Mm-hmm. Bye, local. Good luck out there. Bye.
I don't want to taste weird ass lubes anymore. <laughs> oh. 